A rover designed for Martian rocks just looked up and it captured the impossible. Three iAtlas, the new interstellar visitor, was racing past Mars. The rover caught its image, a faint streak that revealed a startling truth. It's not acting like a comet. No coma, no tail, just a flickering rocky glow. We analyze the light and temperature data that prove this alien traveler is a silent, dense anomaly. You've probably seen headlines about a Mars rover spotting something unusual near 3i Atlas. In this video, we'll examine the image sequence, the unusual surface details, and what scientists currently hypothesize based on light spectra and temperature data. By the end, you'll have a clear understanding of why some experts are saying it's not acting like a comet, and what this means for future interstellar object tracking missions. How could a Mars rover capture an image of an interstellar object? At first, it seems impossible that a rover sitting on the surface of Mars could photograph an object racing through the solar system at tens of kilometers each second. Rovers are designed for nearby geology, dust, rocks, mineral veins, not for deep sky imaging. So how did a ground-based instrument end up contributing to the first close image of an interstellar visitor? To understand that, it helps to know what kind of object 3i Atlas is. It's classified as an interstellar object, the third one ever detected entering our solar system. The 3i means it's the third interstellar body catalogued after one E, Oumuamua, discovered in 2017, and two I Borisov, observed in 2019. The term describes any natural object that is not gravitationally bound to the Sun. Instead of orbiting repeatedly, it passes through once and continues out into deep space. These objects likely formed around another star and were later ejected by gravitational interactions, eventually wandering between systems for millions or billions of years. That raises the next question. How can something moving at interstellar speed show up clearly enough for a rover to capture? The key is that capture in this context doesn't mean the rover stared directly at the object in real time with a telescope lens. It involved an indirect optical observation made possible by coincidence and technology. When 3i Atlas entered the solar system, its flight path intersected Mars's orbital neighborhood. As the planet moved along its orbit, the object's apparent position in the Martian sky became close enough for the onboard cameras to notice an abnormal brightness event. Modern rovers carry more than surface cameras. Some mast-mounted systems, such as those used on recent NASA missions, can pivot upward for sky calibration shots. They help engineers measure atmospheric dust and light scattering. These same cameras can unintentionally record moving objects bright enough to stand out against the thin orange sky. When 3i Atlas crossed near Mars's orbital plane, automated sky calibration routines used for environmental monitoring flagged a light anomaly. It appeared as a brief streak recorded over several exposures. The anomaly wasn't consistent with meteor trails, satellites, or known background stars. Back on Earth, mission analysts compared the timing with ongoing astronomical surveys. They realized the streak matched the predicted position of 3i Atlas. With that link confirmed, teams extracted multiple frames and combined them using a process known as composite imaging. In simple terms, that means layering a series of pictures, correcting for motion and atmospheric distortion to build one higher resolution frame. The final product is what has been described as the first close image, although close here refers to its relative clarity, not physical proximity. Mars was still hundreds of thousands of kilometers away from the object, but its atmosphere provided fewer distortions than Earth's and the consistent background lighting made the reconstruction more precise. Early analysis described a compact, rough object tumbling rapidly. 
the brightness varied irregularly every few seconds, producing a light curve pattern that didn't fit what observers expect from typical comets. There was no sign of a diffuse tail or extended coma, the halo of gas and dust that normally surrounds comets when their ice sublimates near sunlight. Instead, the light fluctuations hinted at uneven reflective surfaces, possibly metal-rich or rocky in composition. Even though the rover wasn't originally meant for astrophotography, its instruments gave researchers a valuable angle, a perspective filtered through the thin Martian atmosphere, unaffected by Earth's weather or humidity. This allowed a clean spectral reading of reflected wavelengths. Once those spectral traces were analysed more deeply, scientists started to see that the light bouncing off 3i Atlas didn't match expectations for an active comet. From that moment, the conversation shifted. If a visitor from another star doesn't release the usual gases or water vapour, then what exactly are we looking at? That question led directly to the search for what might be hiding beneath its strange, silent glow. Why 3? iAtlas doesn't behave like a comet. Brightness data from the Mars observation hinted at something odd. The reflected light changed erratically, but not in a way linked to jets of gas that normally erupt from comets when they heat up. Temperature readings also stayed too stable for an icy surface. Those two clues, light flickering and constant thermal readings, pointed toward a surface that wasn't venting vapour into space. That raised an immediate question. If 3i Atlas really were a comet, why wasn't it behaving like one? Under normal solar warming, a comet's outer ice begins to sublimate. Sublimation means solid ice turns directly into gas. That gas carries dust and carbon compounds outward, forming the visible tail. Spectral analysis, which splits light into different wavelengths to identify chemical fingerprints, usually shows clear signs of this process. Bands linked to water, carbon dioxide, or methane, the brightness of a typical comet also waxes and wanes as its gas jets rotate into or away from sunlight, producing a repeating light curve. When observers looked at the data from 3i Atlas, those familiar patterns were missing. Even as it moved closer to the sun, it showed no coma, the fuzzy envelope of material that surrounds an active cometary nucleus. Instead, its light stayed sharp and point-like, similar to the reflection from a small asteroid. Laboratory modelling shed more light on this. The captured spectra displayed no trace of the water absorption bands expected for ice. Instead, they contained peaks consistent with mineral silicates and possible metal oxides. Those materials are common in rocky asteroids, but rare in volatile rich comet bodies. In plain terms, the surface seemed more like baked rock than frozen gas. One working hypothesis is that the outer layer of 3i Atlas could be crusted over with a residue tough enough to trap any remaining ice beneath. Radiation and micrometeoroid impacts in interstellar space might have melted and refrozen the surface repeatedly, sealing it like glass over time. Another possibility extends beyond cometary physics. The object might never have contained much ice at all. It could have formed in a warm region around another star and been thrown into interstellar space as a fragment of a planetesimal, which is an early stage planetary building block. Competing interpretations still exist. A number of researchers argue that the object could represent a dormant comet nucleus. Dormant means long inactive, but potentially still harbouring ice deep inside. Others consider a bolder scenario, a broken shard from the mantle of an extrasolar planet, dense, mineral heavy, and stripped of its atmosphere long before exiting its original system. The challenge with both ideas is that observations alone can't yet reveal what lies under the surface. That uncertainty is exactly what scientists faced with 1i-Oumuamua a few years earlier. 
that first interstellar visitor also lacked gas emissions, yet showed small non-gravitational accelerations, possibly from invisible outgassing or unusual shape effects. Researchers learned from that debate to avoid hasty assumptions about artificial origins, focusing instead on physical modelling and comparative data. Recent modelling of 3I Atlas motion supports the non-comet hypothesis. Its rotation rate and brightness changes imply a compact, dense body rather than a loose, icy lump. The spin axis appears misaligned with its trajectory, meaning it tumbles chaotically, consistent with a solid object that once experienced impact stress. When astronomers simulated its mass distribution, the models fit best with a rock containing mixed minerals and metal-rich phases. The spectral colours also hinted at space weathering, similar to that seen on asteroid surfaces. Slowly, a picture started forming. A small, mineral-dense traveller from another system, not an evaporating ball of ice. The consensus forming among analysts is cautious, but clear. 3i Atlas does not behave like a comet. It behaves more like an interstellar asteroid or a fragment of some larger rocky body that once orbited another star. That distinction matters because it broadens what interstellar visitors can be. If this one blurred the line between rock and comet, future detections may do the same. For space agencies planning interception missions, the challenge will no longer just be finding icy wanderers, but preparing for hardened, non-volatile bodies speeding through the solar system in silence. Conclusion Each interstellar object challenges how astronomy defines comets and asteroids. Shapes, spectra and motion no longer fit neatly into those categories. The next step is refinement building models that can describe bodies formed around other stars. Upcoming programs such as the Vera C. Rubin Observatory's Deep Sky Survey and the European Space Agency's Comet Interceptor aim to detect and study these visitors as they arrive. Capturing one in real time would provide data beyond current reconstructions. For now, the Mars rover's contribution serves as a reminder that discovery often exposes the limits of our own definitions, not the universe's diversity.